celebrating a century of service was the focus during the American Legion Auxiliary's centennial year. Our ALA members found many different ways to mark our major milestone. Some paid tribute with programs, projects, and outreach, continuing our tradition of selfless service to our veterans, military, and their families. While other auxiliary members celebrated with fundraising events, special dinners, parties, and cake. Lots of cake. More on that later. Our centennial year began with a couple of changes. First, we made history by opening ALA membership eligibility to male spouses of veterans. Today, I am proud to say that we have more than 1,000 male ALA members in our ranks. Second, we turned our focus to national headquarters. Working with our search committee, we hired Kelly Circle, a Kansas ALA member, to be the executive director. Kelly has been an asset to our organization. Our centennial year also included five fantastic mission training events. Either National Vice President Kathy Dottestel or I attended each of the Mission Training 101 sessions. I was in mission trainings in Baltimore, Orlando, and Kalamazoo. I was able to use technology to pop in to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Las Vegas. National Vice President Kathy and I hosted ALA 100th birthday parties at each event. I am very proud to represent the ALA in all the events that we could. These mission-focused moments included meeting a handful of Pearl Harbor survivors on my official visit to Hawaii during the 78th anniversary of National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, and being a part of Veterans Day observance at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. During my presidential travels, I had opportunities to learn more about adaptive sports and lifestyle changes, the focus of our 2019-2021 administrative year, with the emphasis on the health and well-being of our veterans, military, and their families. It has been my goal to gain some perspective on what life is like for someone using adaptive devices, such as prosthetics and sensory aids. I am grateful that my travels afford me the privilege of visiting places like Aurora, Colorado, Washington State, New York, and Vermont, where I experienced a driving simulator, walking with a prosthetic leg, operating a modified golf cart, skiing with an adaptive chair, and learned how to use a hand cycle. And of course, I'll never forget my trip to Walter Reed Medical Center, where I learned to play kayak football. For my Facebook followers, you know what I'm talking about. I got a sense of how challenging it can be to adjust to these devices. A little bit of understanding goes a long way when it comes to helping America's veterans and their families. People like the Verardos, who have made adaptive assistance part of their everyday life. Additionally, I had the opportunity to visit Turnstone, a United States Paralympic training site in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where I learned about a Paralympic sport called goalball. The game is for athletes with visual impairments. Two teams of three blindfolded athletes attempt to throw a ball with bells inside into their opponent's goal. This fast-paced game requires amazing listening skills as well as strength to throw an almost three pound ball. I got the chance to wear the blindfold goggles and couldn't see a thing. I gave it a try and was able to stop the ball, but it was no easy feat. The athletes were training for the goalball Paralympic team. Go USA! Looking out for the health and well-being of our veterans, military, and their families is a key reason why it's so important for our American Legion family members to work together. Here are a couple examples of teamwork at the national level. American Legion National Commander Bill Oxford and I recorded several public service announcement videos together. Our topics included buddy checks, 4,600 Legion posts without auxiliary units, and membership eligibility. SAL National Commander Clint Bolt joined us for National Poppy Day. 
I was also asked to accompany the Legion on their system worth saving visits to VA medical centers and town hall style meetings with veterans. I participated in a visit to the VA Medical Center in Washington, D.C. and to the Lexington VA Healthcare System in Kentucky. The information gathered during these visits is assembled annually into a system worth saving report, which goes to the United States Department of Veterans Affairs officials, members of Congress, and yes, the President of the United States. The National Veterans Creative Arts Festival, a traditional live stage show in 2019, and an at-home event last year, continue to be inspiring and therapeutic for our veterans. I am thankful for National VA and our Chairman Vicki Kautz's leadership. Now, back to the sweet ways our auxiliary members from all over celebrated the centennial with parties and cake, lots of cake. Not that I'm complaining. There were cakes with the AL emblem, cakes with our Centennial Year logo, cakes with poppies, and of course, there was a cake with my face on it. And don't forget the Cornelius cake, which featured a full-size Cornelius in his poppy mask. We all know the COVID story, a global pandemic triggering fear, uncertainty, and even death. Everything put on pause for months, social distancing and gathering limitations, and finally gradual reopenings. Our hearts continue to go out to those who lost loved ones due to COVID or have otherwise been impacted by this pandemic. The silver lining for those served by the ALA, it is the resilience and boundless can-do spirit that sparked our auxiliary members to press on we found safe ways to fulfill our mission of helping and honoring our veterans, military, and their families. It wasn't long before ALA members were safely helping others by sewing thousands of face masks and contacting veterans' homes to see if their residents were in need. ALA juniors also stepped up. Their many projects included distributing gift bags with treats to essential workers, and bringing smiles to everyone they encountered. In some cases, ALA members teamed up with Legionnaires, Sons of the American Legion, and the Legion Riders to do mission-based outreach, like safely getting food to local veterans and their families who might otherwise go without. And don't forget the many drive-by birthday parades and celebrations. ALA members also looked after one another during our Caring and Sharing Week in April 2020, members called each other to make sure they were okay. Later that year, after our 2020 National Convention was canceled, we didn't throw in the towel. We continued working the mission. We didn't let COVID stop the celebration. We forged on into a second year of celebrating a century of service. Throughout the country, we threw birthday parties to mark our 101st birthday. Our display of strength and commitment will surely be among our organization's finest moments. It was great seeing the photos and hearing stories from National Children and Youth Chairman Lisa Williamson, who attended the U.S. Air Force Academy Awards graduation ceremony on behalf of the Auxiliary. 2021 has continued to be a year of service, not self. I have seen firsthand the differences that ALA members make in the lives of our veterans, military, and their families, as well as in our communities. We made a difference when we presented a quilt of valor to U.S. Army Korean War veteran and legionnaire Don Heinemann at the Iowa Veterans Home. You made a difference when you continued to contact our senators and representatives about issues important to our veterans during the virtual Washington, D.C. conference. Every day, our members are making a difference, and I want to celebrate all you've done these past two years and will continue to do as we move our mission forward into another century of service. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to meet so many of our grassroots members while serving as your national president. We all taught each other, 
sharing new ideas when it came to technology, or modifying our programs to fit the current situation. We all learn to adapt and overcome. That is the military way, after all. 2021 has brought light back into our in-person events. Seeing the spirit, determination, and willingness of our ALA Girls Nation Senators while they spent a week in our nation's capital rejuvenated a sense of energy. Our future is bright in these young ladies' hands. As a former junior, I appreciated seeing all our younger members working the mission, getting involved in service projects, and learning how to become future leaders of the ALA. Please continue to stay involved. You never know where it might take you. Someday, one of you may be giving this report as National President of the American Legion Auxiliary. My story started years ago with a single pretty little red flower that bloomed into a stage full of poppies as I took my presidential oath on my first day in office. It has been an honor to serve during our centennial. Thank you for the opportunity to lead our organization.